Howdy, folks, and thanks for tuning in to the third episode of Rediscover the Winds, a Wyoming history podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Kirsten Belisle. And I'm Zach Larson. Both Kirsten and I are collections managers turned podcasters for the Fremont County Museum System, located in the heart of West Central Wyoming. Our county museum system has three museums, the Riverton Museum, where I work, the Fremont County Pioneer Museum in Lander, and the Dubois Museum and Wind River Historical Center in Dubois, where Kirsten works. All of our museums focus on telling the stories of early frontier life in Wyoming with a mix of Native American heritage, natural history, and general regional history. Using artifacts from our three museums, interviews with experts, and a load of historical research, we're here to discover, and in some cases rediscover, the quirky, the heart-wrenching, the fascinating story of Fremont County, Wyoming, and the American West. We're coming to you from the middle of the Wind River Basin, home to obscene amounts of sagebrush and ancient petroglyphs. From the gravesite of Sacagawea to Amelia Earhart and countless nameless women who helped tame the rough-and-tumble West, the topics we talk about are things right outside our back doors. Last month, we dove into the Fremont County Museum archives where letters, diaries, postcards, and journals of original Fremont County residents helped us explore what life, love, and family was like on the frontier. This month's episode will actually take a slightly different format than the first two. March is Women's History Month, and what better way to celebrate women's history than to spotlight some of the impressive women who made their homes in the American West and Fremont County. And to do this properly, we decided to do a mini-series this month. Each week during the month of March, we'll release a short episode that focuses on telling the story about different women who impacted their communities in Wyoming and the American West. This episode, the first in this miniseries, is going to cover why Wyoming is called the Equality State and share with you guys how the movement to give women the right to vote got its start right here in Fremont County. So more than 20 years before the U.S. Congress would admit Wyoming into the Union as its 44th state, The temporary government for the Territory of Wyoming gave women within its boundaries the right to vote in 1869. And this was neither the first state slash territory to try to give women the right to vote, nor was Wyoming the first place the idea came up. Led by Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott, the Seneca Falls Convention took place in 1848 and actually launched the women's suffrage movement in the U.S. that would eventually culminate in 1920 with the passing of the 19th Amendment that would give women in all of the United States the right to vote. By the 1850s, the Washington and Nebraska territories introduced bills meant to give women the right to vote, but these movements failed. The Dakota Territory failed to pass a women's suffrage bill in early 1869 by one vote. The inspiration for giving women the right to vote in Wyoming is a highly debated thing. Some people argue it was a political maneuver with racist undertones, while others say it was a marketing ploy meant to draw more women to the state, which at the time had 13 men to every one woman. And still others even say the movement started out as a joke, and that no one believed it would actually pass. Still, regardless of the politicians' ultimate motives, it can't be denied that Wyoming was the first territory and state to give women the right to vote and hold public office. Which means we get the associated bragging rights. And the nickname of the Equality State. Yeah, a fact that the Wyoming Office of Tourism has definitely capitalized on this year. In December of 2018, Wyoming Office of Tourism dubbed 2019 the Year of Wyoming Women. Wyoming as a whole is celebrating the 150th anniversary of women's suffrage, while national celebrations will start next year in 2020. So where did Wyoming's successful suffrage movement get its roots? We said Fremont County, but that's a pretty big area. Yeah, 9,266 square miles to be exact. And the answer to the question is South Pass City, a historic mining town located in modern-day southern Fremont County, where one Mr. William H. Bright, a gold prospector turned saloon keeper in South Pass City, became the president of the Wyoming Territory's Legislative Council in 1869, and he introduced the bill that would give women the right to vote in Wyoming. William Bright's wife later said that her husband, a Southerner who fought on the Union side in the Civil War, believed that if men could vote, there was no reason why his own wife and mother couldn't vote as well. Even before the women's suffrage bill passed, Wyoming's 1869 legislature passed a resolution allowing women to sit inside the special space where lawmakers sat. They passed a bill guaranteeing married women property rights separate from their husbands, a move several other states had already done, but Wyoming also passed a law guaranteeing that teachers, most of whom were women, would be paid the same wages whether they were men or women. So by December 10th, 1869, the Territory of Wyoming granted women the right to vote and hold public office. And they were the first government body in the world to grant women full suffrage. 
And that term full suffrage is key for Wyoming's bragging right, isn't it? It definitely is. Women around the world had gained the ability to vote in various elections for centuries, but only if they met certain requirements. For example, they owned land, paid taxes, worked in educated professions, and they could only vote for certain elections and usually were the exception, not the norm. It would take almost 25 years before the next United States territory or state in this case would grant women suffrage. Wyoming's southern neighbor Colorado granted women's suffrage in 1893. So Wyoming was ahead of its time. Definitely. And less than a year after Wyoming's territory uh, legislator, led by William Bright, granted women the right to vote and hold public office, one woman by the name of Esther Hobart Morris became the United States' first ever female justice of the peace. Esther Hobart Morris played a significant role in Wyoming's suffrage movement. Also from South Pass City, her story intertwines with William Bright's own rise to political influence. But we actually plan to get into Esther's story on our next mini episode of Rediscover the Winds. Remember, as part of Women's History Month, Zach and I plan to produce a series of episodes that highlight the awesome women of the American West and their connections with Wyoming. After all, 2019 is the year of Wyoming women. On March 14th at 6.30 p.m. in the Riverton Museum, local poet Carol Deering will present her first published book of poems, Uh, entitled Havoc and Solace to Museum Visitors. And the Pioneer Museum in Lander is hosting a speaker series titled Lander in 1919 on April 11th at 7 p.m. You can join the staff of Pioneer Museum for a program that illustrates what life was like in Lander 100 years ago. So both programs at the Riverton and Pioneer Museum are free and open to the public. So thanks for sticking with us through this third-ish point one episode of rediscover the winds a wyoming history podcast if you liked what you heard today like we've said before like us on facebook at rediscover the winds a wyoming history podcast we also have a youtube page where we will will post these episodes a stitcher page an itunes account anything else i'm missing soundcloud if you use a podcasting app on a mobile device you can probably find us just by searching for rediscover the winds yeah and but on facebook is where we post pictures of people places and things we talk about in our episodes and we also give you guys sneak peeks into future episodes there's not a better place on earth to post nouns than facebook yeah and if you've already followed us on facebook youtube or any of our other formats thank you your support means the world to us and it's because of you guys that we decided to share the silly weird fascinating history of wyoming and we hope you guys get the chance to visit our museum someday or attend some of our upcoming events okay so we have several more podcast episodes planned for you guys including another three another three minisodes for the month of march where we will continue to discuss and celebrate women's history in wyoming and in the american west thanks again for listening to this wyoming history podcast i'm your host kirsten from the dubois museum and wind river historical center I'm Zach from the Riverton Museum. And we look forward to continuing this adventure to rediscover the winds with you next time.